This video is sponsored by Bai. Have you ever looked across the ocean and seen all the cool things that you could get if you lived in the land of the rising sun and thought to yourself, these things are so cool. I wish there was an online store from that would let me buy slash bid on things on these sites and then ship them to me out of Japan to my home. Well, I have good news for you. Bai is a site that places orders and bids on Japanese sites for you, then ships them to you without any ridiculous fees. Wow. Bai lets you buy and bid on items using sites like Amazon Japan, Rakuten, Japanese eBay, and many more. After purchasing an item, it is taken to one of Bai's warehouses where it can then be shipped internationally, aka to you. Be nying up that My Shiranui figure? Maybe you're looking for CDs of your favorite game OSTs, or you're looking for an arcade stick that you won't be able to get in your country. Well, if you use my link in the description, you get a free 2,000 yen coupon, that's about $17 or £12, to spend on the site. But that's not all. Until the end of the month, you can get a 5,000 yen coupon and free international shipping for your first purchase on Meraki through Bai. Simply use the second link in the description and sign up to Bai in order to receive this promo. Thank you Bai for the sponsor and let's start the video. Let's talk about music. Video games are the culmination of different forms of art. You have visual art assets, story writing, dialogue, voice acting, and of course, music. All these aspects combine together in order to set tones and atmosphere. You want spooky? We can make spooky. You want cheerful? Oh boy, we got cheerful. You want badass? We got you, baby! Woo! Fighting games generally have a pretty simple goal when it comes to their music. They want to keep the energy high, but don't want to be too intrusive. So players can just focus on the game and not just start screaming the lyrics whenever the song is playing. That doesn't mean everyone gets the message though. Battle cry! All the sounds and lights seem to be blessing us rock if you've been on this channel for a while, you might have noticed that I like finding game music as I play absolutely certified bangers only on the channel, and I will not be taking any criticism on that. Ever since the early 90s, finding games have basically perfected the art of having absolute bangers in each game they play. I still listen to some of the tracks that came out from Guilty Gear XX, and that game came out when I was two years old. If I were to point at someone who used to go to arcades and say the name of a Street Fighter character, you bet they would absolutely be able to hum out the melody to those songs. Ryu's Feet. chun -Li. Kyle's theme. I don't even have to play it. You already got it stuck in your head. I know that you know it. The music from these old games added to the fights that were happening on screen and enhanced them, but didn't directly overpower them. But we could do better, right? There's got to be more to this than just fighting game music good. So what else have these games done specifically that makes them so interesting? Well, let's start with a simple one. Specific matchup tracks. Back in the arcades, it generally wasn't possible for you to choose the stage that you were fighting on and the music that played during the match. In Street Fighter 3, the stage and the song would default to the challenger's character's default. So if somebody interrupted Ryu's arcade run and played as Makoto, it would go to Makoto's stage with Makoto's theme. Some games took things a bit further, however. If you were to select specific characters to fight each other, you would get intros that look like this. That's sick, and it's a nice little detail to show a small bit of lore between these characters. But, uh, there's, um, something missing here. Guys, where's the cool music? It's just a Buki's theme. And, you know, it would probably just have been a lot of work to do it, and it would have taken a lot of storage space, you know. Our keyboards were pretty small. It was the late 90s, dude. Like, megabytes were huge back then. We just didn't have time for badass music. You've been playing Sol and Kai's theme over this, haven't you? Yeah, so just like in the current era of fighting games, Arc System Works was leading the charge on being the best fighting game makers to ever exist. Get fucked, Capcom! They did it a year before Third Strike came out! It only cost the quality of the sound effects and good gameplay, but listen to this fucking banger! That wasn't an arcade game, though. The original Guilty Gear came out on the PlayStation 1. It wasn't until Guilty Gear X that any Guilty Gear game was out in any arcade machines. So, what game stood out in the arcade for having amazing audio? You know that I gotta talk about Killer Instinct, my guy. Killer Instinct is one of the most 90s fighting games you've ever seen. Let's put a cyborg against a skeleton to the sound of metal bangs and thumping techno. I'm gonna be real with you. 
I've not really played too much of the original two Killer Instinct games, and the music doesn't have as big of a place in my nostalgic brain as other tracks do. But I do know that the arcade versions of these games did something pretty smart. Killer Instinct does a common thing in fighting games where the announcer shouts out something depending on the length of a combo that you just landed. A lot of modern fighting games do this, and it's a nice way to big up the player's actions. In the original arcade release of Killer Instinct, they knew that they have to compete with a lot of noise from random areas in the arcade. With all the machines going off, you'll have to have something that forces your game to stand out. So, what they did is they made the music and bass voice clips quiet. So the arcade owners would turn up the volume on the cab. Then when someone got good at the game and finally did a combo breaker, everyone in the arcade knew about it. And God help you if they didn't turn the volume down before somebody landed an ULTRA COMBO! Now this isn't technically music, but I would be ashamed of myself if I didn't bring it up because of how fucking loud these sounds are. Besides, there's still things I want to talk about with Killer Instinct. Killer Instinct had a remake in 2013, and some of the music went from good for the time to HOLY SHIT, I AM PREPARED TO PUNCH GOD! A lot of the reason the game sounds so good is thanks to Make God, and aka one of the best music composers in the entire universe. Whenever I start screaming at the top of my lungs, this man makes it sound good. A lot of what I'm about to talk about in this section was covered by Holdback to Block in his amazing documentaries about the music and audio of Killer Instinct in much more detail than I'm going to go into here. If you're interested in any of this, I recommend going and watching these documentaries. And if you're not, then I recommend watching them anyway because they're extremely informative. But like, you know, after you finish this video because of the algorithm and stuff. Anyway, Killer Instinct 2013 had an extremely hype and intensive soundtrack that helped every match feel energetic and intense. But there were two things that the music did to enhance the gameplay. Now we all need to go on the same page, so I'm just gonna make the statement, these songs are absolute bangers. Okay, got it? Alright, cool. Killer Instinct is a pretty combo-heavy game, with combos being at a variable length and density. Combos in KI are freeform because they have opener and ender moves, but the things between those opener and enders can be basically whatever. You can do a simple link, you can do an auto-double into a special, you can then do another auto-double into another special. As long as the opponent doesn't break the combo, these combos can go on for a really long time. So how do you make a player feel like a badass when they don't have their combo broken? Well, once the combo ends, you have the theme that's playing is skip to the chorus and keep the intensity and momentum. This feature is so fucking cool, dude! It literally gets to the best bit of the song and makes you feel like you landed that on the beat, and trust me, if you've ever played fighting games, you know how landing something sick on the beat feels. Speaking of combos, Killer Instinct has a feature known as Ultra Combos. You've probably heard of them considering the- okay. These work as flashy finishes to a match in which you're able to style on your opponent without them being able to break the combo. They're cool as fuck, but what gives them that extra level of oomph is that every hit is a musical note attached to it. This means that each character gets their own melody while they're performing an ultra attack. How does it work? Check out the documentary, because I sure as fuck can't explain it. Killer Instinct was sick when it came to the music. As far as I know, no other game does these things. Well, there's something pretty similar to it, to be fair. Probably the coolest thing in different games is when something happens that forces the music to change. I'm sure you've already thought of some examples of this happening, but I want to go through some of my favorite examples. Where to start? Uh, eeny, meeny, miny, Marvel, baby! In Marvel vs. Capcom 3, you can play as a bunch of cool characters. Zero, Dante, Virgil, Spider-Man, Doctor Doom, Phoenix Wright. Phoenix Wright? Yeah, so this game just has a fucking lawyer in it, and I absolutely love him. Phoenix Wright is a stance character who uses his two standard stances to keep the opponent pressured while he collects game-specific resource evidence. In investigation mode, he's able to collect evidence that he will use later. Any evidence that lights up one of the case files is useful, anything else is not useful. He can transition between investigation and courtroom mode at any time. In courtroom mode, he has better normals and is able to use valid evidence to summon projectiles. However, he cannot collect more evidence. He also gains access to his objection. If Phoenix lands an objection while having three valid pieces of evidence, he instantly enters turnabout mode. In turnabout mode, he has increased damage, insane normals, and access to a full screen level 3 super that does an extreme amount of damage. The best part? 
it plays the cornered theme from the Ace Attorney series. When you enter it, baby! This music adds to the momentum of the situation. You've finally done it. You're on the offense and you can easily take the entirety of the opponent's life off with one nice combo. You've earned this. God, Marvel's so cool. Seamus Netcode sucks ass. You know what else is good? Blaze Blue. Cross Tag Bat. How did you get in my room? In a marketing design that I can only describe as... Eh? There are characters from the show Ruby in my Blaze Blue game now. We're going to specifically be looking at Yang, who has this mechanic where when she hits low health, she becomes stronger. Why does she have this? I don't know. I watched the show and it's kind of all just a blurred mess. Anyway, when she gets put in this state, the music changes to her theme. And it never goes back to what it was. I hope you like I Burn. Alright, one last one. In Gilly Gear games, Sol is able to remove his bandana and enter a state known as Dragon Install, except in Strive for law reasons. In the X and XX series of the games, this just changes his sprite and allows him to throw the game, but in Exard, Daisuke hits you with a <laughs> This one also permanently changes the music for the round, but like... I like this song, so who cares? Music is something that can be overlooked in the grand discussion of games as a whole, but these absolute bangers have given me countless hours of enjoyment both in and out of fighting games. What's your favorite song from a fighting game? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you again soon.